Well, look, okay, so let's start by saying, so I'm not, not a Zack Snyder fan, as you know. Um, Watchmen, Sucker Punch, Batman, Superman, Justice League, Snyder's... I mean, I actually really since the, the very first thing, the, the Dawn of the Dead remake, the Fast Zombie, was one of the, that was one of the very early Fast Zombie movies, which I quite liked. I haven't been a fan of his work. Um, he was clearly very uh, civil, and uh, yes. you had a good conversation with him. Um, so here's the thing. So like Gareth Edwards, the creator, this is an original sci-fi property. And that, you know, in and of itself is, is, a good thing. is a good thing. Unlike the creator, which itself owed a debt to things like Blade Runner, this doesn't have an original idea in its head. And I mean, you know, it's, it is originally unoriginal. I mean, he says in that interview, it's like he had this crazy sci-fi movie. It's not a crazy sci-fi movie. It's a sci-fi movie. Um, he talked about all the nuance you need to build a world. Nuance? I, I mean, whatever you think. I, I, some slow-mo, but I'm not sure that nuance is the, is the right word. He obviously talked about it being originally, it was a Star Wars pitch. Then they talked about it being a video game, then talked about it being a TV show. Then finally it ends up with Netflix and it's a two-part movie. I mean, it might as well be a Star Wars spin-off. Um, I think this is to Star Wars what Percy Jackson was to Harry Potter. You know, um, that thing at the end about it somehow exists in the same universe as army because there's a hyperspace portal link. Well, that, was, that was my, I, I did. No, no, I know, but you know, but, that, but, yeah. but, but, but no, no, it, it exists in the universe of all those movies that have tried to reproduce star Wars and failed. And one thing I did love when he said, you know, I originally thought of dirty dozen seven Samurai and star Wars in space. Star Wars is in space. I mean, I know that that was just a sentence construction thing, but um, so George Lucas famously looked to Samurai movies for inspiration Snyder has obviously looked at George Lucas because there's a, there's, there's a weapon in this is he's basically a lightsaber. I mean, isn't there? There, mm -hmm. is a, there is a glowy, cutty thing. The baddies are, to all intents and purposes, the Empire. The goodies are Star Wars caricatures crossed with, you know, a bit of, you know, Magnificent Seven and all that kind of thing. And our guide through this world is a robot voiced by Sir Anthony Hopkins. Yes. Who, I mean, look, Sir Anthony Hopkins is a great actor, but he's no Anthony Daniels. And it is a pound shop C three PO. That all of that is true. The biggest thing is about that that just that yeah, small yeah, yeah. particular thing because you're right. Anthony Hopkins is the first voice that we hear. The first voice that you hear. You think, oh, okay. You know, I wonder how that's going to work out in Northern Lights, yes. which was Golden Compass. Yes. The voice of the bear, Eric Bjornsson, mm -hmm. is your friend from this week, Ian McKellen. Okay. Oh yes, he is. Yeah. So he does. But uh, so then, as soon as this bear opens his mouth, everyone goes. It's Ian McKellen. It's Ian McKellen. And if you've got, and I thought that was enormously distracting. <laughs> so here you've got a robot, which is an in, you know, interesting character. Their, their religion has proved to be untrue and they don't know what they're doing. But I'm just thinking, oh, why, why did Anthony Hop why is Anthony Hopkins? They're a fantastic voiceover artist who could have done you a great kind of sad robot. Uh, like in Douglas Adams' <laughs> yes, creation. Sure. Marvin. Yes, exactly, the paranoid android. But anyway, I just thought Anthony Hopkins was a distraction. Well, on the subject of distractions, Charlie Humdrum's accent, I don't know what's going on there at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and I'm not sure why. Uh, Ed Scrine's got killer cheekbones and an accent which says space fascists, which was, yes. you know... It's... I mean, to be honest, there's, there's absolutely no subtlety in these. No, they literally come down out of the thing as space fascists, it, and exactly. we know where they are. One of the key characters has got a squid face that looks ex makes him look like a cross between Jar Jar Binks and Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. And then there is, as they say in Love and Death, wheat, a tremendous amount of wheat, yeah. fields of wheat. And then the whole thing takes two and a bit hours. And at the end of the two and a bit hours, they've just established the characters who are now going to go and do some stuff in the next two and a bit hours. So here's the thing. I don't think it's terrible. Um, I mean, I have disliked Snyder movies much more. I see that the, the reviews are gen generally not great. Awful, in fact. There I don't are... take any notice of any no. reviews other than yours. It's just, it's, it is quite dull. And it's, there's an awful lot of, you know, um, stuff where nothing is really happening. And then all the stuff that happens, you do think, but, but I have seen every single bit of this somewhere else and the thing about building a world and what i think the thing that people forget star wars and whatever one thinks of star wars star wars people went wow 
you know, the force and the, you know, and, and uh, somebody, maybe De Palma or, or, or Coppola or somebody said to, said to um, Lucas, you should turn this into a religion. You can make a fortune out of it. There was a sense of magic, even though it was kind of hokey and strange and actually comparatively cheap. This feels like it's got all the visual. I mean, you, Zack Snyder knows how to do visuals. There's no question about the fact that he's a, he's a very, very accomplished visual stylist. I just don't like what he does with that. But it, it all the stuff is just stuff. It's just built. It's it, it's just building stuff. And then you go, okay, fine. And then there's the bit. There's the kind of there's the the, the scene in which she gets rescued from what looks like it's going to turn into a really so there's a kind of slightly leery thing going on and then it's but other than that it's just stuff in space with, every one of them wheat. looks like they've come out of a hair commercial they all yeah. have that kind of look at me i look fabulous yeah and 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 yes they do, they do. um but i just i the I, phrase i thought you were going to use is it's perfectly fine because in as much as it does what it sets out to do. It's just that given that it's an original piece of work, as in, you know, as you said, not tied to any other yeah. uh, piece of intellectual property, it's just completely unoriginal. But just come back to this thing when he said this crazy cipher. It's not crazy. No. It's, it's unbelievably well behaved. And it's just like a series of building block elements that are just, they should just call it stuff in space. I remember when... Uh, Jesus of Montreal came out and reading someone saying that it was just like the Magnificent Seven and the Seven Seven going around. And Jesus was, of Montreal? Yes, because because the Jesus character goes around. Oh, I see. And he gathering his mates. Actually, I think. Okay, fine, fine. Got it. Yeah. I think the origin story of this that you're talking about is slightly older than the Magnificent Seven. Is it? Jesus <laughs> going around collecting people. Actually, he's been going on for a couple. There wasn't of seven of them. No, that's right. It wasn't well, Jesus and the seven disciples. No, but you Snow know. White and the seven dwarfs. You know, but that that idea of we're in trouble against an oppressor. Yes, let's go and get a bunch of people together, and then let's go and you know. I'm not particularly holding my breath for the director's cut. Well, the director. I mean, when he was saying that you know the R-rated version, it'll have some kind of weirder stuff in it. Well, what weirder? I mean, I don't. I don't know that the problem with it is that it doesn't have R-rated stuff in it. The problem with it is it's just quite boring. There's, I'm slightly nervous about the R-rated stuff because there was there are a couple There's, of hints mm -hmm. that make me think, I hope you're not going to go there. That's and they, what I was referring and, to yeah, in that particular scene. And they scene. don't with the PG-13. No. And, I think and I'm fine with that, uh, yes. but they don't. So let's hope he doesn't go there. But really. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like I said, he was, it, was a, it was a very uh, civil, and you did a brilliant job with the interview. But I just, I don't, I don't, I really don't understand what, and it, obviously the Zack Snyder fan base is very, very devoted because of all the stuff they did with the, the Snyder cut, you know. <sighs> Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.